Hi young artists, Mrs. Kirk here. Today we're going to draw a coral reef. So I have a sharpie but I also have a pencil and an eraser. I'm going to draw with a sharpie mostly because it's easier for you to see it on camera but totally fine if you want to draw with a pencil and an eraser today. All right, here we go. So before we start drawing, here is a sneak peek of the end result. We are going to start off with the rocks down here in the foreground. Then we're going to move up to the midground, the rock, and then we'll sort of fill things in with details, knowing that the color of the background is coming from the water. Let's get started. Here's my marker, my Sharpie, and I'm going to begin like I said, down in the foreground. So I know that I want a little rock over here. I'm just putting the base of the rock in. There's going to be the base of another rock over here. Just sort of laying it out using some lumpy bumpy lines. This one will be a little bit larger. And then behind this little guy, I'm going to put another slightly larger rock, not quite as big as this one. So it'll come out up with some craggly edges, some places that little critters can hide, and back down so it looks like the rock is behind it using that overlapping technique. Now behind both of these sections, we're going to put a big rock. So let me draw out from here, across here. This is going to be the base of that big, big rock. I have to come straight across, and then I can begin this step. I like to use lots of jagged edges for these rocks. Now before I go too far, I'm going to jump over to the other side and bring the edge of the rock up this way. Just like so. There we go. And see how I brought it kind of down into the middle? It's going to look like there's two overlapped pieces and as you see on my result from the first time, right here, this line looks like there's a piece of rock overlapping the second part. Okay, so now I can start adding some details to it wherever I want. I can add some grass, like this. I can add some of these tubular shapes, they're just cylinders of different heights and they can be really close together or you can have a little space in between them in different heights. Uh, let's see, down here at the bottom I can do a sea star. Remember sea stars have five arms. One, two, three, four and Five. I'm gonna add some spots in the sand. Probably dark holes is kind of what I'm thinking where little goby fish might hide out. I might want some additional coral or anemones or even some little fish up here at the top. Whatever you decide on is fine. Oh, I'm going to give this guy a big eye, just for fun. There he is. Hmm, what else could I add? Sea urchins. Don't step on them. Ouch! <laughs> oh, maybe some little rocks. Do little rocks down here have this big open space in the middle that I didn't have on the first drawing. You can see it's a little bit bigger 
on the one I'm working on now. So I want to think of an interesting way to deal with this space. I could add a cave and an eel. That might be kind of interesting. So sort of an outcropping, we call that, of the rock here. And then maybe there's an eel or something hiding inside there. So I just added an additional line that I can color in and make dark, 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 like a little cave where there's a critter hiding. And that's why I'm thickening up these lines, making it a little cave-like without having to color it all in later on. Okay, so I've gotten to this stage. Looking back at my original example, I could add a few more details if I wanted to, maybe some bubbles, fan, coral, or algae, but I'm pretty much ready to color this in. How exciting! Oh, don't forget to add your signature on these. I usually add my signature before I paint. I forgot to add this one, so I'll add it afterwards. Alright, let's keep going!